Edgar Kautz, and I'm the Managing Consultant at Monero. Um, I'm here with uh, Steve Remington, who's over there behind the camera, uh, who is our fine founder and principal consultant. Um, and really what I wanted to do today was take you through a successful approach that we took with uh, a large organization in the US. And I suppose there were two things that made the approach so successful that we, we found was that we had a very strong focus on the usability and the user experience of what we delivered. Um, and the second part of it was that we used um, quite a sophisticated data warehouse automa uh, automation um, system to deliver the system that we, that we put together. So I'm gonna talk you through that. Um, but really all of this led to um, a really significant increase in the user adoption of the analytics functionality that we put together um, and really delivered a, a level of decision support that um, wasn't seen in uh, that sector before. So just to start off with a little bit about uh, Monero. So we're a BI and analytics uh, consulting company. We were founded um, by Steve in Melbourne. Um, we also have an office in, in Singapore, which is now our head office. And um, we were really founded uh, to fill a gap in the consulting market, which was a lack of business focus in the design and the development of um, analytic systems. So really for us, the focus is on uh, the business where technology is the, the enabler. So a number of different solutions that we provide, I'll quickly go through. So we do data integration preparation, do report and dashboard design, um, training and mentoring, um, and we also help organizations uh, outsource the analytics, uh, analytics function as well. Um, we've got a number of clients who we work with with that. Okay, so I'm just gonna set the scene for this, this case study. So um, it was quite a large uh, multi-divisional organization uh, in the USA, very, very large reach as well. Um, so they, at the moment, I think they have about 106,000 employees spread across the, uh, the whole of the United States, all states and territories. And we were working on an online recruitment system that processed about a million uh, applications annually, which is really, really high volume. Um, so within that recruitment system, uh, there was a, we basically um, were working on a, the BI and analytics functionality that supported uh, the decision support processes to the recruiters, hiring managers, uh, senior managers, uh, et cetera. So just very quickly, a recruitment system basically takes you from the initial job, so you might be a manager, you might request to, uh, to advertise a position, they'll go through a few layers of approval, then it'll be put out to market, candidates will come through, those candidates will go through an assessment process, and then um, you'll go through to onboarding with a successful candidate. So the system had a really, really close fit with the requirements of the business. It was a really well-designed system, but unfortunately the same programmers who designed this great transactional system, this workflow system, designed the, uh, the BI system that underpinned it. And really um, it wasn't designed at all for um, decision support um, at all. So uh, didn't really use any of the decision-centric design principles. So the overall adoption of that system was very, very low, um, really right from the outset. And, and uh, I suppose the, the tool that they used, so they used a tool called Yellowfin, which you might have seen around the conference, um, to provide this information to the users. Um, the tool was, was really great, but the interface they created within the tool wasn't designed at all with the user in mind. So the other problems, I suppose, were on the data warehouse level, where the, data warehouse, the database data, data warehouse wasn't structured at all for for user support, it was hard to use, it was confusing, and it was all hard coded, so any changes really took a long time to, uh, to make. The other thing was there was a complete drop and rebuild of the data warehouse every single night. So at 3 a.m., the whole data warehouse would be deleted and then rebuilt from scratch. So the, you know, the system was struggling to, a, to do a daily refresh and the users were saying, we want a more frequent refresh, we want the data to be refreshed every couple of hours. And um, you know, all of this was, uh, was causing a whole lot of problems with the customer, and I, I think, um, the servers as well couldn't, couldn't keep up. I think you could probably fry bacon and eggs on the servers every night with the, the work that they were doing. So earlier on in the project, we realized that it was really, uh, the system was beyond salvage. Um, and there was really only one thing to do, which was to, uh, to more or less bulldoze the, the data warehouse and the content. So we, the, you know, the analogy we like to use was that the house was on a really great block of land, but the house itself really, uh, you know, the, 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 the foundations weren't sound and it was beyond repair. So we kept the platform software, which is Yellowfin, but we really um, didn't even trust the business logic that was built into it. 
So what we decided to do was to rebuild the whole system using what we call um, well, decision-centric design and, and right service principles, it's right service as opposed to self-service um, principles. So um, really what we focused on was understanding who the, who the users of the system were, how they interacted with the content, what kind of decisions they were supporting or needed to, needed to support, um, and really around the business logic as well, like what could we build in that would make it as usable as possible, because we really wanted to focus on making a system that was so usable, so intuitive, um, that um, you know, we'd uh, really get that engagement from our, from our user base. So, so yeah, so we redesigned the whole, the whole system based upon the user decision requirements, the decisions they needed to make, the information they needed to, to get to those decisions, and also the very specific recruitment process that they had as well. So what we did is we presented all the data with very meaningful uh, names and descriptions. Even though this sounds really trivial, I can't stress how important it is to provide uh, the interface that an interface that really makes sense to the users so they're not confused by it. It really drives all of that uh, engagement with the system. We also zealously focused on the scalability of the system. We knew that we could grow the system to thousands of, of users, but uh, it needed to be good. So we decided to use uh, quite a sophisticated data warehouse automation um, technology to, uh, to implement the system. So what this really allowed us to do was uh, well, maybe I'll just start by saying data warehouse automation allows you to build um, data warehouses, data structures, without actually manually coding all the information. So you use metadata in order to, to build those data structures. And one of the good things about that is it makes it very easy to make changes. So the whole evolutionary approach with BI development is supported through data warehouse automation because um, really with, uh, with, you know, with a BI system, if you deploy you know, something and then the users don't come back to you asking for more changes, your system's probably not being used at all. So um, knowing that we were going to be asked for changes, we wanted to be able to make those changes very quickly in so days and uh, up to a week, not weeks and months like in, in other um, situations where it was all manually coded. So we also built a whole lot of um, reports that we distributed to all the users as well that were very, um, that um, had a lot of filters and were really, um, catered for you know, the 80% of the information requirements. Um, and we also put together a recruitment analytics team that were champions within the business. And uh, these guys were actually strong detractors at the start, but, but um, after they saw what we put together, they, they really, um, uh, we basically did some training with them to understand the processes in order to support um, decision making, um, the data structures as well to a certain extent, and, and, uh, and then they basically started um, working with the decision makers um, autonomously, uh, which, was, which was really great. Thanks. Okay. So it grew to about 2,000 regular users of the system. And the other thing I'll mention is we won an award for innovation in that particular sector, so we're really quite proud of what we, what we put together. It's going to move on a little bit quicker because I'm running out of time. So just some business benefits from the, the system we delivered. So they're able to really link the HR goals of the organization to the recruitment goals, the organizational goals overall. So an example of that is matching the demographics of the organization to the demographics of the USA, which was one of their strategic um, goals. Um, there are a whole lot of recruitment cost savings as well around time to hire, optimizing sourcing strategies. And there's also around... Um, the matching candidates to locations where sometimes locations had a particular loading, so I mean more expensive to employ someone in New York as opposed to Maine, uh, we were able to uh, work with them to start reducing their costs in that uh, manner as well. So just to take you through some key learnings, some takeaways. So first of all, really uh, everything needs to start from the, you know, the decisions, the, de the information requirements of the users. So that came through the, you know, with the decision-centric design of the data structures and also the, uh, the user-centric design of the interface that we put together that was very, very highly intuitive. Um, the other thing was really about data warehouse automation. Now, I made the point earlier that change is great because it means the users are engaged in your system, um, but you need to be able to set yourself up to deploy those changes rapidly and manual coding isn't, isn't the way to do it. So 
um, really recommend that data warehouse uh, automation is something that you guys um, look into. Um, and also about usability and user experience and um, really looking at uh, analyst-led support in addition to user-led support. So sometimes it makes sense for business users to use the system and get their own um, insight, get their own information, but sometimes it's better to put an analyst in place to act as a chauffeur to, to solicit the information requirements and satisfy those, those um, and, uh, the information for the decisions that are being made. So we found that there was quite a really good balance that, was, uh, that we found with that recruitment analytics team that we, that we put together. And the other thing is really about designing for scale. So we designed a system that was, uh, uh, you know, that we could expand, that would we to a, a large user base, but also to very tight refresh. So we could, if the user decided to increase or decrease the refresh interval to, for example, uh, 30 minutes, the system was designed to uh, to cater for that. And I don't know if you there was a, an ad on TV a few years ago. I think it might have been a Toyota ad, and you had this. Uh, sort of iteration, iteration between a manager and a designer, and the designer, or I think it was the engineer, and the engineer would say, "I've, I've managed to reduce the emissions to this particular target," and and the uh, manager was like, "It needs to be half that," and it was kind of that between our uh, lead architect and our BI developer, where he'd he'd put something together and we said, "No, it needs to be needs to be better than that," and um, really trying to design for as much scale as possible. So. Um, yeah, feel free to uh, speak. That was really all I wanted to wanted to say. But uh, we have a stall just outside. Feel free to talk to us if you like more information about what we put together. But um, really, the um, the focus on usability, user experience was what really um, delivered the results with this project. So, thanks very much.